Covering nearly half the Earth's surface, the vast open ocean and deep sea environments of the high seas are ecologically vital, critically threatened, and among the least understood on the planet. The ocean is the world's largest and arguably most important carbon sink, yet the vast majority of it lacks any meaningful protection from multiple stressors, including overfishing, deep sea mining, and fossil fuel exploration that threaten to disrupt the indispensable role it plays in the climate system. Scientists and coalition members of the High Seas Alliance have identified some of the incredible biodiversity hotspots in the high seas that deserve priority protection and could become the first generation of high seas MPAs under a new UN High Seas Treaty. One of these hotspots is the nutrient-rich waters of the Emperor Seamounts, which supports a vast array of biodiversity. The whole mountain range is an artery of biodiversity which runs throughout the North Pacific. The scientists tell us that these mountains are stepping stones for all marine animals when they are crossing the ocean. But the Emperor Seamounts, they have suffered a heavy exploitation. During 60s and 70s, the world's largest amount of seamount fish was removed from there, and a lot of corals too. These corals, the vast area of corals, will need uh, hundreds of years to recover, if they recover at all. And the bottom sea trolling is still continuing right now. Ali from Palau, today we stand at a crossroads facing a climate crisis, a bio biodiversity crisis, a humanitarian crisis, and an ocean crisis. Palau is on the front line of this crisis, and our children's future is in peril. Palauans have lived in harmony with the ocean and land for centuries. Conservation is rooted in our culture and it's faithfully passed down through the generations. Today, caring for nature forms an important part of our modern constitution. As a large ocean state, Palau is committed to protecting the ocean. Like all Pacific Islanders, for us, life begins and ends with the sea. If you do not protect it, it will not protect us. The decisions we make and the actions we take in the coming months will determine the health of our planet for centuries to come. It will determine our children's health, safety, and security. The high seas are global common, and we can only effectively protect them through the creation of an effective international treaty. So I urge all of you to join us and help make this treaty a reality for the sake of our children and future generations. Sulang. So We have to close this whole area to fishing permanently. We have to create a marine protected area inside the United Nations High Seas Treaty. This is the only way to save the Emperor Seamount and its contribution to the planet, us and the next generations. The leading women for Ocean Network calls for an international effort to have a very, very strong, ambitious High Seas Treaty. certainly a, a window into a, a different world than most of you are living in right now so please enjoy the the break and the serenity I always find it amazing to think that 
no human eyes have actually looked at this piece of seafloor before. So you are seeing it uh, at the same moments that we are, and it's, I think it's really special. We're lucky to be catching this close-up video footage, so we're taking the opportunity to look at this animal very closely. And just stunning. So there's a saying that life begets life, and it's certainly true in this case. We've zoomed in on the sea cucumber to see that it's covered in what we thought were tiny hairs, which have turned out to be hydroids, which are related to corals and sea anemones and it's just covering this animal. And we're just admiring the view, really. Our expedition aims to try and fill in some gaps of, in knowledge we have about biodiversity in the deep sea off Western Australia. Uh, it's very underexplored, we haven't had the opportunity to use an ROV such as Sebastian from the Schmidt Ocean Institute. So I hope you're as excited as I am. It could be a long day of looking at rocks or it could be an incredibly exciting day. Either way, you'll have to stay tuned to find out what happens. Welcome to the deep sea. Hi everyone, I'm Janelle Ritchie from the WA Museum. This is my favourite animal, it's a Hymenaster slime star and we think that they use slime as a defensive mechanism and they're super cool so we hope you enjoy it. This is a faceless cusk eel, um, which has generated quite a high level of excitement from our fish curator, Glenn Moore. Please enjoy the footage of this amazing creature. Welcome to the bottom of the sea floor. We have a little welcoming committee here waiting for us today. I'm Dr. Nerida Wilson from the Western Australian Museum, and this is the last of our series of dives. I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are here. The control room is loving this. It's beautiful. We are just absolutely in admiration of this beautiful glass sponge garden that we're watching here. Just want to say thank you to all um, joining us today and along, along the cruise. Um, just want a quick special shout out to some of you who are in isolation, including my parents, John and Lorraine Kirkendale. I know you've been watching with bated breath but these amazing dives, so thank you all.
Imagine a place so dark, toxic, and hot that the very idea of life proliferating there would seem absurd. Crazy hydrothermal rock full of noxious chemicals you know, arsenic and selenium, and it's potentially radioactive, and yet it is teeming with life. And that's just astonishing to me. And you think about what you can learn from studying something like that. So it's a tremendous opportunity. From crushing pressures to pitch black darkness, from inhospitable cold to superheated systems, Deep sea organisms are masterfully evolved to survive in places we originally thought life could not possibly exist. There's all kinds of challenges living in an environment like this, yet life proliferates. Until very recently, these alien worlds remained isolated from human impact. However, as we further our understanding of the deep, we are beginning to see just how vulnerable these environments are to the changes people are making to the planet. It's devastating to see that impact on these ecosystems before we even fully understand them. Everything on Earth is part of an interconnected system. Sea, air, land and ice are linked by important life-sustaining processes. Understanding what those processes are is incredibly important to how we understand how the climate of our planet works. As we emit carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and our planet heats up, these processes shift and change. As the ocean warms, the conditions and patterns which sustain life are altered, and we may lose environments and species without knowing they ever existed. We're the ones who are capable of having the greatest impact for good or for bad. You wouldn't go and build a house on land that you haven't surveyed, that you don't know what's under there. You wouldn't drink water that you haven't tested to see if it's clean or if it's poisonous. Studying the ocean in the way we're doing and many others do allows us to help us understand what our ocean is about, what it takes to keep it healthy, and how can we reap the greatest benefit from it through sustainable practices? How do we do the best job that we can of being the caretakers of our world? From hydrothermal microbes used in the development of one of the first COVID drugs, to clinical trials using deep sea compounds to treat lung cancer and Alzheimer's, there is an abundance of information in the ocean's depths that could be vital to our survival. And the deep may also hold solutions for mitigating the effects of climate change. The importance of understanding these environments is paramount. By coming up with new ways to explore this largest inhabitable volume on our planet, we're essentially establishing a baseline, biologically speaking, of what's there, and then from there understand what changes we're making to it. The future is hopeful, but there is still much more to discover, and so much that we still need to learn. Some deep-sea organisms are 4,000 years old, having started life when human beings were only just inventing how to write. Their environments have remained relatively stable for millennia. And now, we are accelerating change at an unprecedented rate. We must dive deep and look into these worlds beyond imagining to discover what is there before they are lost forever. People from all around the world are working together to create the tools and methods to better uncover what lies hidden in these most inaccessible depths of the ocean. We still have time to address this problem, to highlight and underscore ways to make things better, to change the way people think about things. Through this vital work, we hope to unlock a profound understanding of our planet, our ecosystems, and ourselves. More than ever before, the deep sea needs us. And from the moment when life on Earth began, we need it too.